Welcome everybody on the internet. What in the heck are we looking at? Well, we are looking at a tank that is five, six, maybe even seven years old that has had the same substrate, same dirt and soil in it, and different plants growing and all sorts of things. And this is one droplet of water at 400 times magnification. We have over a dozen little life forms in here. And we've got everything from algae, that little green spot, to worms, uh, like little nematodes or something, to uh, protozoa, to bacteria, which you can't even see the bacteria. It is uh, far too small to see with this microscope. But there is tons of life in here from fungi to all sorts of things. And all of this is what creates a stable and healthy tank. It breaks down the fish waste then creates, creates fish food, it concentrates nutrients, and it also uh, will, will help stabilize when a tank has a spike in ammonia or nitrites or nitrates. What is this right here? Well, this is a tank that is only three months old, and what it looks like when we take a sample of the water from it. And you can see there's one paramecium, maybe a protozoa or a single cell organism in there, and some debris, uh, two species it looks like. Uh, and some leaf material, I'm sure there's some bacteria, some algae in there. Maybe one more little species that's super teeny in there, little dots that are kind of f floating around. And that's about it. So let's jump in and talk about what we're going to be doing today. Hey everybody, welcome to The Secret History, Living in Your Aquarium. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between a cycled tank and a seasoned tank. So, I want you to keep in mind that everything we're looking at today has been set up and is just the way it is uh, naturally in my fish room. I haven't cleaned anything, I haven't done any water changes out of the usual, it's probably been a week since the last water change, and I haven't scraped the glass. But we are going to take a sample from all of these tanks, a tank that is three months old, a tank that is two and a half years old, and a tank that is five years plus. It's actually probably going on seven years, but uh, the fish and the plants and things are all going on about uh, five years in it and it is actually a filterless tank as well uh, but you can see here that it is full of mulm plants and little organisms uh, whereas the two and a half year old tank and I've got all the info on pH is 6.7 with the TDS of 200 what that TDS is we don't exactly know uh, pH of 7.0 and a TDS of 180 on the two and a half year old tank, maybe three years old. And you can see there's still quite a bit of mulm and, uh, and debris, and there's a plant uh, particle in there, a chunk of plant. And then we've got the three month old tank, which is a pH of 6.8 and a TDS or total dissolved solids of 160 parts per million. This has some more light, fluffy looking stuff. It doesn't have too much heavy debris. So how did I gather the samples for these jars? And what is the point of seasoning a tank versus simply having a tank that is cycled? Well, let me tell you. So as I was saying, this is a cycled tank. It's about three months old, maybe four and it has substrate plants and fish it has about 10 species of plants maybe 15 and it has about 8 to 10 species of fish and shrimp in it and so will all of the tanks we're looking at so that will help us kind of compare what time does so in a newly cycled tank it means that your nitrogen cycle is safe and complete so here is one of the spots where I took a sample of substrate for the jars, by the way. But in the substrate, a cycled tank probably doesn't have much development. If you see here, you can tell that it's granules. There's life in there. There's some roots going on. Maybe a little bit of algae has started, and there's some uh, kind of white spotty stuff on there. And there's actually a fair amount of root activity in here. But that's the extent of it. I want you to keep this in mind when we go take a look at the two and a half and five year plus 
tank. Now, also going on, the sponge filter or the filter slipway, if you have a hang off the back, is going to be uh, covered in algae, mold, slime, bacteria, fungi, you name it. It's starting to culture, and you have the nitrosoma and the nitrobacter or nitrobacillus uh, that first turns ammonia into uh, nitrites and then turns nitrites into nitrates and then nitrates are either eaten by your plants or taken out by water changes so you guys can watch more videos on how to establish a cycled tank but I want to talk about a seasoned tank this is not a seasoned tank yet let me show you uh, what a truly seasoned tank is after I first explain where I got the samples in those jars and what I did in order to collect them. So I used this, a turkey baster. I took one sample by mixing up about an inch and a half, two inches deep of debris in the tank like this. I just kicked it up so it was dusty and then I took the water from there and I filled the turkey baster. The next thing I did was I literally dusted all the plants I took a clipping from one plant that was about two and a half, three inches long, and then I went over all the stone surfaces, the glass that has some algae and kind of scraped against it, looked for any spots that looked rich in debris, and then I put that in the jar. Finally, I put the clear water in the jar, and that's what we were looking at at the very beginning was water from the open water. It looks very clear and clean. We were looking at that water in that first slide. And that was water from this tank and water from this tank. Now this tank is over five years old. The substrate, when I moved houses, I kept intact. And I'll show you a better view of some substrate soon. But the substrate is old. It could be up to seven years old, as with the glass in the tank itself. In here, this is an Indonesian biotope. The pH and the total dissolved solids are roughly the same. I ran an air stone in this tank because it was filterless for years. So I wanted to clear up the water of any floating particles and debris and take pretty similar samples from all the tanks. So we have this tank that's the five year plus tank on the far end of the seasoned spectrum. We have that first tank we looked at and then we have this tank, which is a little bit bigger. It's about 10 gallons bigger than the other tanks and it is two and a half to three years old. Now what I want you to check out and like I said, I didn't clean these tanks, so pardon the mess is look at the the substrate, even in a two and a half year old tank. You can see where the fish waste and mulm has broken down and become a layer that's actually sectioned off the lower layer of substrate. You can see where the orange or yellowy colored iron is in different deposits in the actual substrate. And that's been collected by bacteria, plant roots, and little creatures that die in colonies. So all these different layers are going on. You're getting algae on all the surfaces, on the glass, which, sorry, it's a little dirty, on the logs and, and uh, the rocks and all the different surfaces, plus on the plants themselves. You even get moss growing on the corner of the tank. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take all those samples in those jars and I'm gonna show you the highlights of them under the microscope. So let's get ready, let's jump in, and let's see how much diversity there is in a seasoned tank versus a tank that is merely cycled. A tank that can process your waste and that is safe for fish versus a tank that actually will break down all of the fish waste turn it into nutrients, help crowd out bad bacteria and bad algae blooms with a whole diversity of algae and bacteria and fungi, and also that will provide food for the little creatures in your tank, which will in turn provide food for your fish. That is a seasoned tank. Now let's look at it under the microscope.
All right, everybody, let's start with something we recognize. Now, this is the two-year-old sample of water, and we're looking at one drop right here, which is about three times the size of the area we're looking at under uh, 200 times magnification. What you're looking at right there, that green stuff, that is filamentous algae. You can see it has a really cool structure that's like almost like a quadruple helix, uh, that weaves around a tube shape and almost like a rectangular uh, cell division. And that's because it's a plant, so that's what it looks like. Then we have the other critters in here, and you can see that if we scoot it just a little bit, we're going to see different types of paramecium. These are single-celled organisms, or sometimes... Uh, we're looking at, you know, protozoas and other little life forms that are multiple cells, um, micro crustaceans and things like that, seed shrimp and ostracods. But here we're really just looking at very teeny life forms, amoebas and things like that. But each of them has found a niche or a role to play in the tank. And while it's true that there are some harmful uh, versions of these things. What we're looking at here is a pretty healthy slide of really good diversity in an aquarium. Uh, if you were to look in a pond, you'd find something very similar. And to me, I want this type of thing to be what my sample looks like. Now, if I were to be uh, hatching out eggs, I might want them in a more sterile environment. But at the same time, What's really cool about a very diverse and seasoned tank is that these little creatures, for everything that could be a pest, usually over time, if you let it naturally just kind of form and you don't pour a ton of one type of critter in there, uh, you're going to get another type of creature that eats that or that breaks it down or that keeps it in check. So the fact that there may be a dozen types of algae or 15 different paramecium species all in here they all keep each other in check and we don't ever get a giant bloom of any one thing and you can actually see them foraging and eating all that dirty nasty uh, broken down stuff like this is mostly fish poo and plant waste and uh, I think that's really cool and I wanted to just show you guys how much this is illustrated in a sample this one's only two and a half years old. Let's scoot it over <clears throat> on the next slide here and see what an even older tank, the five-year-old tank, looks like. So this is that mix I showed you in the jars that's all mixed up. And just look at the life. Just look at the diversity and the density of these creatures. Your little tiny fish, they're going to be eating all these little creatures they're going to be eating the creatures that eat these creatures it is an entire ecosystem on its own and if we had the ability to see it it might be interesting enough just to keep these creatures in an aquarium and look at this we can see on this older tank we've got all sorts of you know what those little chunks are those squares those are fish poo they come out in kind of a long train and then they break off into pieces same with shrimp and snail waste. And all these creatures are working hard to break it down, take every little last bit of nutrients out of it. You can also see we got a lot of detritus worms in here. And then on every surface, those are going to be covered in beneficial bacteria and in bacteria that breaks down just about everything you can imagine that could be in an aquarium. Usually a bacteria will evolve and find a place. And I just wanted to show you one eyedropper from a seasoned tank versus the two-year-old tank. And finally, let's take a look at that last tank, a brand new tank. How much life do you think will be in a random drop from one of the jars? All right, so here we have that drop. And uh, we got some algae. Looks like we have an amoeba, actually, which is quite interesting, or some sort of little single-celled organism right there. Maybe dead, though. It's not moving much at all. Uh, but 
we do have some sort of little creature in there, which is interesting. And sorry it keeps focusing, but it's hooked up to the microscope and it tries to get the best shot. Now, what else are we seeing? Well, we're seeing, you see those little lines, those little strings there? That is fungi. And it can easily take over. That's why you get uh, fish eggs turning white or why you get fish food turning fuzzy. And it looks like there are some little teeny tiny microorganisms in there if we look real close at it. But there's also quite a bit of algae in here. And we're mostly seeing that single cell green water uh, algae. It could be cyanobacteria too. It's hard to say. Um, but we're looking around this drop looking for any bigger life. And we're really only finding if we hold it still on something that is kind of an anchor point for life, let's try to find a piece of algae or a little something or other that maybe some life will be around. Here we've got another piece of algae, and that's actually black uh, hair algae there. You can see that uh, wobbling bit that my voice even causes to vibrate. That clear outline there, that is a empty cell wall of the algae. So, uh, not much life at all in there, but there is debris, and I'm sure there's tons of bacteria in there, which does serve a purpose and does break things down over time. Okay, here's a good clump of material in this little eyedropper. We'll hold it still and see what life we have. So, it looks like we have one paramecium, perhaps. Um, let's try to get it to stop shaking. One paramecium, but we also have colonies of algae forming in here. So we'll try to get this to focus a little bit better. There we go. And it looks like we may have another little um, critter in there of some sort uh, that is like an amoeba that may be dead. I can't tell exactly. Maybe one of you guys knows who's into microbiology. But we also have something in there. Maybe it's a stentor. Maybe it's uh, a tardigrade or... a um, a little worm of some sort something is moving around that mass and eating it and breaking it down so we do have some basic life but mostly algae and yeah it looks like we've got a little worm hey everybody so that was a look at the microscopic level of our aquariums no bigger than my pinky finger was under that microscope so I hope this shows you guys a little bit why having a tank with some age and some diversity really provides a safety valve for your aquarium. Plus, it allows all those little creatures in your tank to have a food source, to have uh, a different amount of bacteria, of fungi, of other little critters that will crowd out the harmful ones and oftentimes have symbiotic relationships you know just like probiotics in our stomach a lot of these fish shrimp and plants evolve to have the help of these little creatures that live in the water with them so thank you for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll talk to you next time on the secret history living in your aquarium if you really enjoyed it, you can join and be a member for a buck ninety nine. Help keep this free for the other folks who can't always afford a buck ninety nine. Uh, and all my videos are always going to be accessible to everyone, and all of them are going to remain free and cited with sources. Thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up if you like this kind of a channel, this kind of content, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Talk to you later. Bye.